Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna to explore the question, what are my top introductory war games? My best beginner war games. First up, a little bit of background. A few months ago I made a video called Top Solitaire War Games and in that video, a lot of people posted comments with the question, what are good war games to introduce someone to the hobby? Where is a good place for me to start? And I have to confess, it wasn't a question I had explored too much. So over the last couple months, I've been thinking about this and I've been testing out games and I've been picking up some games that I think would be really good games to introduce people to the hobby or to get started if you're playing by yourself. Now it's important to understand that this journey isn't complete. It's very much a work in progress. I've got a list for what I think are my top introductory, my best beginner war games right now, but I'm also gonna present a number of games that I've brought in that are challengers to that list that I have yet to play. And at the end, I'm gonna go through a few upcoming games that I think might have the potential to be brought into this list later on. Now you might be asking, what criteria are you using to make this list? First up, obviously, it should be relatively easy to learn with a clear rule set. That goes without saying, right? Number two, it should connect to history. Now this doesn't have to be real history, but you should feel like you're exploring a historical event from some certain perspective. Three, probably the most important one, it's got to be fun. If it's not fun, you're gonna lose people and people aren't gonna keep playing. So that's probably the biggest one. Number four, and this is where I think it gets a little bit murky. It connects to more advanced war game mechanics, things like hex encounters, card driven play, some of these fundamental components of today's war games, maybe it's range, attack power, zones of control, those types of things that make up more traditional war games, you can see the connection between this introductory war game and more complex war games. Next up, visual appeal. It's got to look good, right? The box, the map, the components, it's got to say, play me. Otherwise a beginner's gonna look at it and it's gonna look like a spreadsheet and they're gonna be like, no, I'm out of here. Last criteria, it's gotta play fast. I'm talking a single sitting, maybe at the most two hours, but there's a chunk of the game, ideally that you can play in about an hour so that you can learn, play, and have a wargaming experience in a short period of time. Our groundwork is done, it's time to jump into the list. I'm gonna present six introductory war games that I think you can use to introduce yourself or others to wargaming. All right, our first game on the list, 300 Earth and Water by Nuts Publishing and designed by Yasushi Nakaguro. Now this game is fifth century BCE. The Persian Empire is trying to take over the Greek city-states and the Greek city-states are trying to prevent that from happening. Now I'd recommend this not so much as a solitaire introductory wargaming experience, but as a two-player introductory wargaming experience. Uh, not solitaire because a lot of the gameplay is cards and deception and not knowing what your opponent's gonna do and tricking your opponent and trying these strategies, they might be a little bit crazy. Now this is super fun, very visual, plays fast, it's easy to learn, and I've been playing this a lot lately on rallythetroops.com. We've played a dozen games now, and I finally feel like I'm starting to get past that kind of introductory beginner level to understand some of the deeper strategies in the game. So I think there is a lot of depth and strategy that you can eventually work your way into, so it's got a lot of mileage as well. Now you might be saying, why wouldn't it be higher on the list? I do think the first couple times you play this game, you gotta be a little bit patient, because you might understand the rules, but you're not gonna know what to do. The strategies aren't quite apparent at first, you gotta play a little bit before you're like, oh, I could try that, or oh, maybe I could do this. And there's a, for a simple game that looks relatively simple, there is a ton of different strategies and tactics you can take. So a great fun game, introductory game for Wargaming, 300 is definitely on the list. Game number five, I debated whether to include it on the list or not, because I think in one of the key criteria, it doesn't really meet it, but it's so bloody fun and it's such a good game that I wanted to put it in here. And it's definitely Wargame themed. So game number five, Resist from Salt and Pepper Games, designed by David Thompson, Trevor Benjamin, and Roger Tankersley. In this game, you take on the role of the Spanish Marquis in 1936, fighting against Franco's regime. You are the resistance fighters. Now this is a solitaire game. Solitaire games are great to play as introductory war games if you play them cooperatively with somebody else, right? So this is a card game, super high visual design makes you think so much and it's so much fun the way it's structured because you're gonna play and then immediately you're gonna to wanna to play again. This is one of my favorite lunchtime games. This would also definitely go in my game, my list of top games that I've played in 2022. It's just such a well-designed and well-executed game with tons of depth. Very beginner friendly, you can learn it really fast, it plays really fast. The only reason I wouldn't put this higher on my list is because while I think it's 
it's a war game themed game. It doesn't really tap into that history of the Spanish Civil War that much. So it's a little bit light on that historical criteria that we talked about. But that aside, this is a spectacular gaming experience and it's war game theme, I think deserves to have it be included in this list as an introductory or beginner war game. Game number four on our list is a game I just finished playing. Lanzarath Ridge from Danvers and Games, designed by David Thompson and Nils Johansson. Now you might see a theme in this list with David Thompson there because I think games that he's involved in the design with, uh, he, he designs with an accessibility mindset. So I think a lot of his games are very accessible for newcomers to the hobby. Lanzarath Ridge is no exception. Now in this game, you take on the role of about 20 US soldiers at the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge, you're trying to defend Lanzarath Ridge against waves of German paratroopers at the start of the Battle of the Bulge. So, it's a solitaire game, but again, solitaire games are great introductory experiences, especially if you want to play them cooperatively with somebody else that has a little bit more experience and is willing to shift some of that load to you as the beginner to let you play. Or, you could easily play this one on your own and learn a lot about war games. Now, there's some really nice war game design elements in this game with the range and the way the machine gun works and fire and lines of sight and things like that that are handled very elegantly. The thing that I think really makes this game shine as an introductory war game too is its visual appeal and the sense of history that you get from playing this game. World War II is often a, war, a kind of a, a historical conflict that we can kind of connect with on so many different ways and this game really taps into that vibe. It's just a beautiful map, beautiful counters, easy to play, a lot of fun, and you're gonna learn as you go along how to play the game, and a lot of different mechanics are gonna kind of bring themselves to bear. So I think it really is a great gateway game into deeper war games, and yet is a game that presents a lot of good thinking on its own. So number four on our list, Lanzarath Ridge from Dan Versen Games. Now this is a game you might be familiar with from our top solitaire war games list. And I bring this in almost as a representative representative of an entire category of games, but I want to bring it in because I do think it makes for a fantastic introductory experience. Another solitaire war game, Sherman Leader from Danvers and Games. Now in this game you take on the role of a group of US forces, kind of battalion level forces, where you're going to be fighting a campaign against German or Japanese troops in World War II. You have leaders, you have individual tanks, individual squads, and mortars and stuff like that, and you're going to be trying to survive through this kind of multi-week campaign. Incredibly fun to play with a lot of different game elements woven into it, but at its heart it is an outstanding war game. A couple things about this. There are a lot of leader games out there, and I think almost any one of them could probably fill that role of an introductory war game. The series in itself has a very modest rule set. It's probably higher up on the introductory level war games. The rules are, you know, they're a little bit of a lift for an introductory game. It's going to take you a little bit of a while to learn and figure out how to play. So it's probably higher up there in challenge as an introductory game, but any one of these games in the series is probably a pretty good place to start, especially if you see a theme that you like. I started with Sherman Leader, had a great time with it, and it's not by any means a game that I think a more experienced war gamer should discount. These are just a lot of fun to play. So, Sherman Leader from Danvers and Games, number three on our list. Game number two on my list, I think, honestly, I think I could flip number two and number one, but here we are. The Shores of Tripoli, designed by Kevin Bertram and Fort Circle Games. Now, in this game, you take on the role of either Tripolitan pirates or the U.S. Navy at the beginning of the First Barbary War. As the U.S. forces, you're trying to stop Trip the Tripolitans from raiding all your forces and you're trying to reach a peace agreement. As Tripoli, you're trying to break the U.S. will to engage with the Mediterranean and your world. Now, why is this game here? It hits on every single element of what you're looking for in an introductory war game. It's easy to learn, the rules are clear, it's got great balance, it's fun to play. The design is so elegant. I mean, the map is just so beautiful. You got wooden pieces, the cards are great. And the thing that I think really shines about this game, and this is what I'm looking for kind of in these top, like a top of the list kind of thing, is how much does it introduce the player in depth to a period of history. By playing this game, you're gonna learn all of the key aspects of the US, of the first Barbary War, right around the year, a little bit shortly after 1800. 
You're going to learn about the history. You're going to learn about some of the subtleties to the tactics and the strategies, and you're going to get a chance to play that and have a greater understanding for this period in history. Fantastic game for introducing history in a fun way with a beautiful design. It plays fast. Now, one last thing, as this, I think that there is a solo bot in this, and while this game can be enjoyed in a solitaire mode, it really shines in two player because there is a level of depth to this that I think can keep you coming back more and more. I've been playing this game a lot on rallythetroops.com because it's another game that's up there. Probably played about 20 games now over the past month. I thought I knew how to play before I started playing it on Rally the Troops and playing against better players, I was getting my butt kicked. And now I finally, after about 15, 20 games, I think I'm understanding kind of that next level of strategy that's involved here. And I'm starting to do better against better players. So a lot of depth in the package as well. I can't say enough about this one, The Shores of Tripoli from Fort Circle Games. Game number one, here we go. This is, again, I one and two are really close, but ultimately, by Stealth and Sea, another game from Dan Versen Games, and yes, another game by David Thompson and Nicola Sagini. Now, in this game, you take on the role of Italian commandos, underwater commandos, and you're gonna ride these torpedo craft into British harbors in World War II and try to blow stuff up. This game, again, it meets every single criteria you're looking for in a top introductory war game. Super accessible rule set, easy to learn, playable in digestible chunks of about 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes or so. Makes you think, and if you talk about learning about history, again, so much depth. I mean, you're gonna learn about the individual missions. Every mission in this game is crafted after a historical mission that happened in World War II, and it's gonna leave you just shaking your head at the bravery and the heroism of these commandos that did this. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing, the story behind this. And you're gonna live this experience, you're gonna feel their emotion and suffering. I mean, these underwater torpedo craft used to break all the time and the game represents that. You're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna have moments of glory when you blow up like an aircraft carrier. And you're gonna be like, wow, we did it. So, I mean, it is, riveting gameplay, easily digestible, clear rule set, so many good things going on here. I should also say too, this is, you know, be, let's be clear, this is a solitaire game, but I think it's a fantastic game for cooperative play because you're usually gonna have three SLCs, these underwater torpedoes, in any given mission. And so one player can control two, or if you've got three people, each player can control one. And so you'll be able to work together as a team to try to complete your mission. So I think from that perspective, it's a good solo experience if you're trying to get into war games on your own but it's also a good cooperative experience because you can play together and try to accomplish the mission that way. So from every perspective, I think this is one of the finest introductory war games that I've encountered. It is number one on our list right now. I can't think of any place where this game doesn't meet all those criteria. I think you'll absolutely love it. And you've got so many missions and ways to play in the game that it's got a ton of depth as well. By Stealth and Sea from Danvers and Games, our number one game on top introductory war games. Now there's more. I mentioned at the beginning of the video how this is a work in progress. I've got a bunch of games in that I've yet to play that I wanna play and see if I can bring those into the list of top introductory war games with this idea of being kind of a series that's going to evolve over time and the list is going to change as we go forward. So these are in no particular order, but I wanna toss them out that I've got in that I've yet to play that I think can make for good introductory and beginner war game experiences. First up, two games from Lock and Load Publishing. Tank on Tank East Front and Tank on Tank West Front. Now, I did an unboxing on Tank on Tank East Front. I hope to get this one to the table very soon. These games are nice because one of the things I've been looking for is an introductory hex encounters, traditional hex encounters war game. Not necessarily one that's using kind of a hexagonal grid to play something different, but something that's truly a hex encounters experience. I think both of these games meet that criteria. Very simple rule set, tactical level. This one on Tank on Tank East Front, it's the Axis forces against the Russian forces. You've got individual anti-tank guns, tanks and things like that, uh, squads and stuff. You've got a hexagonal map. It's a beautiful game. Likewise, Tank on Tank West Front is the Allies versus the Axis in the West Front on World War II. So engaging topic with a brilliant, elegant design. I'm very kind of interested to see how these play out and see if they might make our top list of introductory war games. Our next game, I'm not, to be totally honest, I'm not sure this game is simple enough to be an introductory war game, but I suspect it might be. And it's very unique and has some accessibility points if you're coming from a different direction. 
Let's, let's present. Antietam from Command Post Games. Now this is a game, 1862, North versus South, US Civil War, the bloody battle of Antietam. And it's a two player game, wooden blocks. I think it's a very accessible game, especially if you're coming from any kind of a miniatures history and you wanna dig into a little bit more of traditional war gaming elements. It feels like a game that sits kind of very elegantly between miniatures and war games. I do wanna kinda of get it to the table and play it to see how it feels first, but it's got a very small footprint, a cool design strategy, the wooden blocks are just so tactile and fun. It feels like you're playing a military engagement, I think in a way that I haven't yet experienced in another war game. So really cool design elements, very much visual appeal, and I know there's a period of history, especially for a number of war gamers that they're very interested in. So from that perspective, this might be a very accessible point for jumping into war games if you're interested in this point in history. So I'll play this one. It's going to come to the come to the channel soon, but I think it could be a candidate for top introductory war games. Next up, Field Commander Alexander from Danversen Games. I think Danversen Games just makes a lot of accessible war games, and I think this is another one that I've heard a lot about. I've watched a couple of plays on YouTube. Looks really engaging. Now, this one's a solitaire game. Tank on Tank and Antietam are two-player games, and I think they're going to shine better in those experiences. Field Commander Alexander is a solitaire campaign, a solitaire game where you play one of four campaigns of Alexander the Great. So you're going to have all the problems in military and the logistical problems that he faced. Low to moderate complexity. I've heard fantastic things about about this game. I've yet to get it out to the table and look at it, but I do think it could be a contender for our list as we go forward. Next up is a game that I think has a little bit of a story. So we've played a lot of The Hunters and Silent Victory on the channel, and a number of people have recommended, I mentioned how much they like those games. I don't include those games in introductory war games because I think their visual appeal makes it a little bit challenging for a beginner to jump into. But as we're playing those games, a number of people mentioned this game, and I think this game might solve that element of the introductory war game conundrum. Nemo's War. Now in this game, it's based on the novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. You take on the role of Captain Nemo in the Nautilus, and you go on a bunch of adventures, discoveries, battles, it's set around 1870 and things like that. People have said this one is a remarkable adventure, much in that theme of, and it's a solitaire game, uh, much in that theme of underwater combat, kind of taking a vessel and exploring the seas with a number of elements that I think might make it a little bit more beginner and introductory friendly. Very excited to play this one and to bring it to the channel. I'm also looking to see as to whether this one can become one of our top introductory war games. When I mentioned Sherman Leader, I mentioned that that could be an entire category of games. And we have some other dimensions of the Leader series. We've so that was land, air, and sea, also the other dimensions. I wanted to mention a couple of other games that people have particularly mentioned in that series to me that I want to explore as introductory war games. First up, uh, Hornet Leader, so carrier operations, air operations, more modern, and then B-17 Leader, where you take the role of a B-17 flying fortress, a number of them actually in a campaign. So very much, very similar to the Sherman Leader in series, game in terms of gameplay, Hornet Leader takes you into modern air combat. B-17 Leader takes you into World War II combat. These are games that have come highly recommended to me among the, the larger number of leader games. And everybody has their favorite, right? So as soon as I post this, I know people are gonna go down in the comments and say, oh, you should have mentioned Thunderbolt Apache Leader or the other ones. And, so, like, and I, know, I know, I get that. I totally get that. But these two by far have been ones that have been recommended to me, I think a little bit more highly frequently than the other ones in that series. So I got these two and I want to definitely want to explore them as introductory war games. Next up, I don't feel like any list would be complete without this one. We're talking about introductory and accessible war games. The Undaunted series, and I'm looking at here is Undaunted North Africa. So this is a tactical level, World War II, and this one you're in the long range desert group, individual tanks and kind of smaller units of soldiers. This is a two player game. I'm, I, my understanding is you can play it very well, solitaire. I'm also looking for Undaunted Reinforcements, which is kind of semi out of print and expensive right now that I'm hoping to combine with that to explore both a two player element of the Undaunted series and the single player element of the series. Now there's also Undaunted Normandy, which covers the Normandy invasions, and then the upcoming Undaunted Stalingrad, the massive two player campaign series game that I think takes the series in new directions. I've heard fantastic things about this. I know a lot of people really like the gameplay and the accessibility record of David Thompson and Trevor Benjamin make me feel like this is a great candidate to be one of the games that sits on that best introductory, best beginner war games list. So really looking forward to getting this one to the table and testing it out both in its two player and its solo format. 
Next up, I think there's a lot to say about this next one because it's not just talking about one game, but Memoir 44 by Days of Wonder. Now in this game, uh, World War II, Normandy invasions, uh, you're going to take on Axis or Allied forces. It's got miniatures, easy to ac accessible gameplay, tons of fun with a great and fantastic reputation, reputation. And if you like it, there's a lot of expansions that expand on this gameplay. The reason in particular why I wanted to put it in this list is as I was doing research for this video, a number of people mentioned Command and Colors Ancient Command and Colors, Commands and Colors Napoleonics, or Commands and Colors in Medieval as introductory war games. I tend to feel like those are a little bit too... Any game can be an introductory war game, but I tend to feel like those are somewhat complex to accomplish that goal. But here's the thing, Memoir 44 is based on that same system that's used in Commands and Colors. So I think this is the access point that you can use to segue into those games if you'd like to go in that direction. So for that reason, very interested to explore it in a, as a game in its own right, as an introductory game in its own right, but also as an introduction into that Commands and Colors system for which you've got dozens of games you can go off and explore. I've got high hopes for this next game as well, because one of the things I mentioned as we were looking at Tank on Tank, the Tank on Tank games, as I've been looking, I've been looking at what are some good introductory traditional Hex Encounters war games. And I think that's a that's not necessarily as easy to find as introductory war games. So I'm very kind of interested in how this one might play out. The African Campaign from Compass Games. Now this is a game about the North African Campaign in World War II. Two player game, you can play both sides solitaire, but it's designed as a two player, two player game. I've looked at the rules, I've looked at the components, and I've looked at the design on this one, and I think this one, I mean it's a little bit higher up on that complexity level, kind of probably low, moderate kind of complexity level, but it's a very engaging point in World War II history. A lot of people are somewhat familiar with it. The gameplay looks straightforward, streamlined, accessible. The rules look good. It's got great visual appeal. So I'm very interested to see if this one might qualify as an introductory war game based on all of those elements. So I'm looking forward to this one. And the nice thing about that is this um, kind of designer signature edition games is a series that Compass Games is pointing out, uh, pu putting out. So I think if this game works, there might be a number of other games that I'd like to explore from that same perspective. Bottom line, I'm very much looking forward to getting to this one to the table and checking it out. Our last game in the challenger category is Flashpoint South China Sea by GMT Games designed by Harold Buchanan. Now this is a 30 to 60 minute game that you can take either the role of the US or China and it involves the geopolitical conflict over the South China Sea. So it plays fast and not only is it a two player game, solo for either side, you can play Chinese or American if you'd like to go that way as well. Now this is a card driven game, very different than the other games we've looked at because it, again, it kind of touches base on those geo geopolitical decisions, but it has a very kind of low, moderate learning curve, plays fast, looks great, really interesting. So it could appeal, I think, in many ways to someone who's looking for a little bit more of a geopolitical twist on a war game and that type of conflict. So I'm very excited about this one. This one I'll be playing soon. I, I can't believe I haven't played it yet, to be totally honest, but I'm looking forward to getting this one to the table, trying out the solo mode and the two-player mode. Um, I've heard great things about it. So definitely a challenger to break into our top introductory games list. Before we wrap up, I wanted to present a handful of yet unpublished games that I think once we can get their, our hands on them, they have the potential to make it into this top introductory games list. First up, Downfall of Empires and Downfall of the Third Reich, both from Do It Games. Now these are kind of a pair of games, similar in execution, but Downfall of Empires is a strategic game of World War I that you can play in an entire evening. Downfall of the Fall Reich, very similar, covers World War II. Now the nice thing about these is that Downfall of Empires and Downfall of Third Third Reich are, are larger than two player games, which isn't something we've really looked at too much in our list. Downfall of Empires is two to four players. Downfall of the Third Reich is two to three players. Both of these games, I think, are very accessible. I have had a chance, I've had a chance to play both of them in digital forms, but I'm looking forward to getting copies of the game shortly and to check them out on the channel and to see how they might hold up as games that could make it into our list. They also can be played solo, although they don't have a dedicated solo bot for them. They're a little long and they're definitely beyond our two hour criteria, but I think because they meet up all the other criteria that we're looking for and they're so accessible, so much fun, and you learn about a lot about the history of World War I and World War II on that kind of strategic level scale, I think they have very strong potential to break into that top list. Another one that I really like that's in production now and it's Kickstarter just wrapped up a little while ago, 
Halls of Hegra from Tompa Games. Now I had a chance to play this prototype version of it. I don't include it in our current list because it's not available yet. In this game, you take on the role of a contingent of Norwegian defenders that are trying to defend and hold out against a siege by German forces while they're invading Norway. So set again in World War II. I confess on the criteria of con connecting to other war game mechanics, this game is a little bit more in the Euro category, I think, than it is in the war game category, but it's so good at what it does and there's so much going on and it just exudes the history of this conflict. So you learn so much about this battle that happened, but what was going on in World War II in Norway at that time. It's a really fun game, very challenging as well. Very much looking forward to getting this in its final form and then seeing if I think it will break into that final list of top introductory games. Another game I wanna talk about is a game that's actually already out, but it's out of print and I can't get it. 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington Publishing. Now I've seen this one played on a number of channels and I've talked to people about it. Everybody says this is a fantastic introductory level Hex Encounters game. I haven't played it yet, I can't get it. So once it gets republished, I'm looking forward to bringing this one to the channel and checking it out. This one is how you cover obviously the Battle of the Bulge, but it plays fast, it's easy to learn, a lot of interesting strategy and decisions and I have really enjoyed watching some of the videos on YouTube about people playing this game. So I think this game is another one, especially in that Hex Encounters category, that could really break into that list for top introductory war games. Next game is one I'm actually playing and testing right now, which is a prototype of Tank Clash from Amoeba Games. Now this game is coming to Kickstarter very soon at the end of November 2022. I've learned the game and I've got it set up, but I actually haven't had a chance to play the whole thing yet. So I can't say too much about the gameplay, but from what I can look at the rule book and looking at the design and looking at the components, I think this could be a very fast playing game. I mean, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, rules are super simple. This one I think, and the thing I like about it, it's got a very small footprint. So I think this one, especially if you've got kids in that like eight to 12 year old range, this is probably one of the more accessible games I've seen out of all the games we're looking at. Hex Encounters, Tank Combat, World War II, to, I think you could make it in there. I gotta check out the gameplay first, but I'm really interested to try it out. Votes for Women from Fort Circle Games. Now this is another game that is shipping very soon. People could be getting their games probably by the time this video comes out. What, why am I including this in here? Even though it's not, it's not necessarily a war game, I do think it falls under the category of conflict simulation because it's about women's suffrage in the United States and basically you're trying to fight to get suffrage in the United States. It's in the list because of how much I like the shores of Tripoli. I know the playtesting that's gone on behind these games. I know the design and accessibility is one part and I know how well the Shores of Tripoli exudes the history of that time. For that reason, I think, even though I've not played it yet, Votes for Women has the potential to be a very similar game, which is accessible, lots of depth, that you can play it literally 20, 30 times and keep, keep learning things. It's a solo game, two player game, and you can play it cooperatively as well. So a lot of different ways to explore the gameplay. You're gonna learn, I'm sure you're gonna learn a lot about women's suffrage and the movement in the United States and the history behind it. So, Votes for Women from Fort Circle Games. Now. While we're on the topic of Fort Circle games, I wanna mention one more, which is Halls of Montezuma. This one is not quite yet as close in its development path, but this one covers the US-Mexico War between 1846 to 1848. This one, the design and map looks very similar to the shores of Tripoli, the color palette. The gameplay, again, I'm looking at it for it to being very accessible, very easy to get into. And if it's anything close to the shores of Tripoli, I'm pretty confident that it's going to get a spot in our kind of evolving list, if you would, of top introductory war games. One more, and I confess I'm not 100% sure that this one will make it in as an introductory game, but I've had a chance to play the prototype, and I think it does. Freezing Inferno from Princeps Games. This is a gorgeous game, and it is designed, it's about the, the Finnish war, the winter war between the USSR and uh, Finland in 1939-1940. So, uh, big game, really massive, a lot of colors, counters are beautiful, there's a lot going on. When I looked at it, I'm gonna confess, I felt like it was kind of complex for an introductory game, but and as I played it, I was like, yeah, no, this actually isn't that hard. Another chance is one of those Hex Encounters games to really shine perhaps as an introductory war game. Although I reserve the right, I wanna see the final version. And the final version is also supposed to have a single player mode, a solo bot in addition to the two player game. So a couple ways to play it there. But I definitely wanna see the final version and get a chance to play that before I make a final determination as to whether I think it's, it's actually an introductory game. 
It, it might be a good game, right? It's going to be a good game, but I'm just not quite sure if it's an introductory game yet. But I think it's a candidate. And now with that, we've got our list of top six. We've got some challengers and we've got some potential future candidates. I would love to hear where you think I've gotten it wrong. What's missing? Because again, I've just started this about two to three months ago. I want to make the list as good as it can be, but I know there are a lot of introductory war games that I have totally missed. But I didn't want to wait two years to completely wrap up this journey and then publish a video. I wanted it to be kind of a work in progress type of thing that I'm building up. So I tend to come back in about three to six months with an updated version of this list after I get a chance to play some more of the games that are in here and we'll see where we go. So it's gonna be an evolving video, video project and I'd love to get your help, both where you think I've got it completely wrong and which obvious games that you can't believe I've totally missed from putting in this list. So let me know down in the comments down below. I'd love to hear any other thoughts and opinions you have. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this one and haven't seen our top solitaire war games list yet, video yet, I'd encourage you to take a look at that one. Thanks so much for watching.